This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to the program. Joining me now, John Brummett, columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and I might add, an award-winning columnist for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. You got a big award last week. I want to hear more about it. I want you to tell everybody what it was about and uh, how you kind of felt on that evening on Thursday night. What it was all about is that uh, for 52 years, I haven't been able to do anything other than newspaper work. Uh, so uh, the Arkansas Press Association gives a 50 year pen for uh, work in the industry. Uh, they didn't to give me one in my 50th year because of COVID or the 51st. So for the 52nd, uh, they decided to have a gala and give me an award and honor the uh, Renault brothers and give a 52 year award to uh, Walter Hussman and to honor their newsmakers of the year or headliners of the year for the last two years who are pretty notable, Asa Hutchinson and Hunter Juracek, and have a big deal. So I kind of lucked into being part of that. And uh, I'll, I'll just tell you this. A friend of mine said, you're going to act like this is no big deal and that you're kind of put upon about it, but you're going to be inside overjoyed. And she was right. I hate people can see me that well. But yeah, it was it was a very sweet thing. It meant a lot to me. And uh, uh, 52 years uh, in this business from a 16 year old high school kid writing sports for the old dying afternoon Arkansas Democrat to being 52 years later here with you holding forth on issues of the day. I'm proud and I really appreciated uh, the recognition. So that's what it was about. All right. Well, best of luck in the next 52 years as well. I told him, I told him I want eight more years. I want a 60 year old, uh, a 60, a 60 year pen. Uh, and there were, there were no uh, commitments on that, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's my goal. All right. Let's talk about uh, what you write about on a weekly basis and a near daily basis. Uh, and that is Arkansas politics. We had us a governor's debate on Friday afternoon at Arkansas PBS, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Chris Jones, Ricky Dale Harrington, not very many fireworks in this. My analogy for this debate was um, it was a couple of boxers in the ring and they were sizing each other up and faking like they were going to throw a punch. Nobody ever really threw one. So what was your assessment of how the candidates did in the debate? Oh, it was a non-event, just what Sarah Sanders wanted, uh, a, a complete non-event. And I'm told by Democrats that this was all this, this sanguine, loving approach by Chris Jones, who literally turned to her and told her he loved her, was all part of a calculation as to what he needed to do to soften the liberal edges of, of, of Democrats with their problems of getting elected in Arkansas. Maybe. But the point is, there are a lot of things about her that I and others have been talking about that went the one chance to a challenger on them, a challenger on them, uh, was lost. Uh, I, I, there was a question, the, the highlight of the debate or low light. There was a question to her about the influence in an ordinate amount of out-of-state money into campaigns, namely hers. See, she said she wasn't, uh, she wasn't going to. Uh, uh, apologize for anybody anywhere who was for her. Chris Jones said, yeah, I got a lot of out of state money too. I agree with you. And then even the libertarian said, I even got an out of state check. And so then they say back to you, Ms. Sanders, uh, Ms. Sanders for rebuttal, rebuttal of what? She ended up in a rebuttal talking about how great duck hunting and fly fishing are in Arkansas. And I thought, there you go. There you go. <laughs> There's, there's, the Arcan there's the one chance to have an Arkansas governor's debate. One, a relevant question as to, as to the new level of nationalization and the Trump network money that funds her. And, and, and nothing. It came to fly fishing and duck hunting. Uh, the format of, bless AETN's heart, I love AETN, one minute answer, answers, 30 minute, a 30, one, a 30 second rebuttal, and no spontaneous follow-up and the panelists, three good panelists asking good questions, but sort of pre-scripted it seemed questions. Nobody can go back to the last question and, 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 and ask for follow-up on that because they've planned to cover all these bases and they insist as they must, I think as a public entity, AETN, to throw in the libertarian. And he, uh, 
he, he takes a third of the, of the time and, and relieves any stress on the front runner. She has a third of the time relieved of stress because she's in charge of that. That left Chris Jones's third, and he was loving everybody. So there you go. There's how I read the debate. May as well not have happened. I do think that the debate format needs to change some to allow some more engagement, like what you're asking for and talking for. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that the Republican candidates with these massive leaves that we see in some polling would uh, sign up for a debate like that. I think they well, would I think if, if, if I could just mildly change the, uh, change the format, uh, and I don't, I mean, just mildly, I think Sarah Sanders wouldn't have been there. Uh, but as it turns out, so what? She didn't really have to be there. Uh, uh, and the opponents and, and the other candidates didn't have to be there because basically nothing happened. Look, I know we in the press, we like uh, combativeness. I know that there's polls showing Chris Jones, you got to, you're doing pretty well. This is your chance to, 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 to help yourself in your own uh, image, perhaps. But man alive, there are important issues here. What she's going to do on public education, well, we know about it in terms of, uh, of school choice and merit pay and uh, uh, blaming, uh, uh, saying that, 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 we're not in, that we're not teaching, we're indoctrinating. All of these things, big parts of what I've written, what we've discussed here, what others have talked about, you get her live and in person, albeit with a one minute chance, and it, and, and it, and it comes uh, to nothing. So I was, uh, I was disappointed. Uh, to say the least. I'll say this last subject, our last word on this subject here. I, I'm not for the combativeness. I'm for the contrasting. What? How are you different right. and fleshing out a little bit more of how a candidate, uh, how deep their position is on certain no, no. details is what I'm looking for in these debates to hear more on these plans and then contrasting views on these plans. That's what I like in a in a good debate there where you can see. Well, I'm not, I didn't mean to say I want them to fight. I want them to call each other names. Uh, uh, and, and I want challenge and accountability. Yeah. Challenge her, challenge him. Challenge the one who's going to be governor, most likely. Challenge and, and have accountability. Flesh out to what she says if you can. But don't let those things just sort of go away to an exercise in uh, whatever that was. All right, we've got some new poll numbers out. We show uh, John Bozeman, Tim Griffin with uh, growing leads in their races. Sarah uh, Huckabee Sanders still has that lead over Chris Jones, but it really hasn't moved much in over a month. What's your take on why you think uh, that race may be a little stagnant versus the other two where we've seen some Republican growth? Well, I thought it was because of uh, her own negatives, and I think it is. I mean, uh, I, I think over, over time and the, the, the attacks on her that have been made in the press, the fact that, and I hear from some independent voters that they can't believe that she's so arrogant that she won't talk to reporters or she won't, uh, and she seems to be running against Joe Biden. I mean, I think that, uh, and the attention paid to that has dropped her lower among independent voters than uh, say Griffin and Leslie Rutledge and, and, and Bozeman. Uh, your experts were, were we're saying that basically she's not going for the independent voters. They're saying she's just running a totally Republican race and not make trying to make any 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 swing vote appeal. I'm not sure what the design of that is. Uh, I'll give you maybe she just won't. Go ahead. You you tell me what the design of that would be. Why is it better for her to win with 54 rather than 61? I, I don't I, I don't I don't know why she wouldn't go for swing voters, but uh, that's it's not better to win with 54 than 61, but if you were trying to develop and cultivate a national brand to be competitive someday in the future in Republican politics at the national level, you got to compete with a Ron DeSantis and a Greg Abbott and, uh, and a Donald Trump. And so you've got to not have any room in your portfolio for being too independent or even moving left on some issue. And that's why I think that she is, um, See, this is the value of this. This is the value of this. Uh, you, you usually ask me, and I hope I'm helpful at times, but you just explained it to me. And, and, I'd, uh, and I guess that's so, uh, because she, didn't she take off to Iowa right after the debate to do something? And, uh, and she's, a, she's a national political figure, and she weighs in on national issues. I knew that. Uh, so, yeah, okay. Uh, very good point, and I'm glad I and our viewers uh, have, been, uh, have had that illuminated for them. But you.
I'll let you. you work that into a column. You can take credit. I'm already I'm, I'm as soon as I sign off here, I'm going to open up Tuesday's column and 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 add something in there to of that nature, which will show how clever I am. <laughs> All right. Lastly, uh, we looked at issues one, two, three, and four. Issues one, two, and three, a little bit of a jumble. Issue four, the pro or the recreational marijuana amendment loss of support uh, on there and a gain in opposition. And that race may turn out to even get closer still, I predict. What do you think? Well, it's gone from in, in the sort of the abstract, just as a concept in the last poll before it was on the ballot for sure. Yeah, we, we, we saw some raw, basic, superficial numbers. Sure, we are. Sure, make it, make it legal. Sure, by 58.5%. And it gets on the ballot. People start to look at it. People start to analyze it. Money gets spent against it as well as for it. And the specific proposal comes into question. And the election is between the general concept of whether we ought to legalize uh, uh, recreational marijuana, uh, uh, which, yes, people of Arkansas would vote for that, against this specific proposal, which, among other things, Bills in special interest now in the medical marijuana business, giving them quasi monopolies with a specific distribution of the money uh, and locks it locks it in as a constitutional amendment difficult to or, or very difficult to change its concept versus is this the right way to go. And then there's a sub issue there. Even if you think this is not the right way to go. What if you vote against it on that basis and we pass Amendment 2 requiring 60 votes for future passage of amendments and make it difficult, if not impossible, in your lifetime to, in any form, uh, have a constitutional uh, amendment to uh, legalize marijuana. I've got, I'm here for people thinking through all of that. And I think if you take the trend line of your poll and divide it up according to the trend, you're about 50-50. This could be something that goes late. I think, uh, as I told you a few weeks ago, the drama on this ballot is that issue certainly not the governor's race so so and i think as I, you and i talked for weeks it's going to go like this and and does it does it cross do the lines cross by election day and uh, we very well might but there are a lot of things to consider uh beyond the simple concept and which i think in the abstract would pass with about 60 percent He's John Brummett. He's a columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. We always appreciate his insight and commentary. And again, congratulations on your 52 well, years in the newspaper business. I'm very proud of you, my friend. Well, thank you so much. Thank you a lot.